So this episode we're going to look at more advanced techniques in the hammer and we'll even be able to build an entirely custom map like this or apply some of these techniques to a default map in Dota with the tileset editor. So now in our hammer we want to go and create a new file and here we're given an empty map. If we go down and set it to the, go to the tileset editor we're going to go to the block tool. So we click this block tool and by default you'll have this thing called reflectivity 30% as your material. So it says it over here and if you click this and do a box. Now this box by default has physics enabled and this is just with this material and not all the materials have physics enabled and I'll show you something to do with that. So we put this box out and what we need as a default is to go to our prefab. So See this window down here can sometimes be a little bit small, especially if you're using a smaller monitor. So what you can do is, is see here with this, you can click this button and there's an option for open floating window and it will give you a big floating window that you can browse and open. If we want this to be there, I accidentally dragged it up there, but you can find your stuff much easier like this. So if we go into prefabs, we don't want to drag this into a certain location. But what we want to do is get the radiant entities and we want to get the dire entities and we drag them into our map. Now we'll look at prefabs in a future episode but right now we just want to drag them into any random spot. Now at the moment there isn't really anything so interesting and what we're going to do is with this reflectivity texture we're going to just create a box and we're going to create another box over here. And this one down here is going to be a little bit different and what we're going to do is we're going to make it a ramp. So how you can do that is with the select tool you can go to currently we're on object select we can go to mesh select, face select, edge select. What we want is edge select so we can select this edge down here and there's also a vertice one which is like the corners so you can select this and drag out and now we've made a ramp and automatically with this material it will build the physics and allow you to walk up there. Let's look why. So if we go back to our object selection and while selecting this, we can scroll down here on the right hand side down in this object properties and there's an option here called uh, physics type and the drop down menu says it's on default and if this is set to none and there's also some other materials that the physics just won't generate for whatever reason. I don't know the exact specifics of why uh, but Maybe it's spaghetti code from Valve, I have no idea, but this is just the way it is. And so we're also going to get another material as an example, uh, which is going to do the same thing and do a grid. So if we go in here, we find this texture called gray grid 4 and we do the same thing. We create another box and we're going to build this up higher as well. And we're going to also make this a stairs just for completeness and we do the same thing again so we pull this edge we select this edge and we drag it out now and the last thing I want to do is go to models so instead of going to prefabs we go to models and we just get this simple model that's already in Dota and we'll see how all of this interacts when we go and save this and build it so we need to save this I'm just going to call it tutorial map yes so now that we've loaded in the physics, we don't fall under the map. Let's see this box over here. We blink up on top of it. We can blink up there. This 3D model, we can walk through it. Uh-oh. And then we can walk up the stairs. And if we click down on the ground, we see that our pathfinding brings us around. Because Ray King by default has a patting of just a ground unit. You can have flying state as well. And now finally, we'll look at this guy and we can walk straight through him. So we need to go and fix all these problems. And one thing I want to look at is create hero Marana. And Marana has an arrow. So this is the default interaction of what happens in Dota if you're not aware. When you throw an arrow, it will go up on the box and uh, the arrow will come up on the Z axis. So it's like flying above the ground. So if we have a look here, the arrow goes up 
over it so it's always visible that's normal within dota you'll see that the arrow also goes over here as well and goes up in the box that's normal if you have any awareness of it and also her leap will allow her to navigate up and down off the high ground as well so that's pretty cool but we got to go and fix these other problems and one other problem i want to state is that see this is supposed to be a grid uh, we can't actually see the grid on the top unless we zoom in and we can only slightly see it. The reason why this is happening is because the reflectivity is too much. So we have a few problems that we're going to go and fix. So let's go back into our hammer and let's go and fix this stuff. So here at this example, what we want is a skip. So if we go in here to our materials and we type in tools and in the tools, uh, there is a good few of these things that have like text. So there's like fog volume, camera clip, mad, map edge clip, no nav clip and stuff like that. What we want is skip and this prevents your um, the physics from generating. So then the nav mesh won't generate in that location. So if we click this material and we want to make a box from it. So we can do this. Boom boom and we drag this under the floor as well so now at this location there's going to be no collision that will generate there it'll per basically per i think you're allowed to fly over that location as like a, a bat rider or something along the lines of that but you're not allowed to stand in that location if you want to put it that way so now we have this other problem which is this block here we can walk through and what we need to do for this is we need to go down to clip so in here there's an option called clip and we'll select that material okay we have it already selected now and we go to box so we want to create another box that's the same as this one that's the same size and just to ensure that we are lining things up correctly down on the bottom menu here you can drag and change things as well with a top down view and this can be sometimes useful when trying to align things now what it doesn't show you though is the z value so we need to drag that up and now we need to select this edge in here but the problem is is that now my cursor won't allow me to select this because the 3d model is in the way so now we're going to look at a thing called show and hide so if we go and select we go back to our objects selection we select this uh, 3d model and if we click H, it will hide it. And we can unhide it by selecting U. Now these shortcuts are all mentioned up here in the menus somewhere. So hide entity and stuff like that. So we hide this, we can hide this guy, we can hide the floor and press U and we unhide all of it. So now what we wanna do is just hide this guy. We can also, just for an example, you can also hide one face. So you can hide just that one face in itself. And now you can see inside and stuff like that. So we're going to unhide uh, all this as well. So we'll go back. Why is it not unhiding? What the f Did I delete it? Okay, there. Some bug or whatever with the tools. So we're going to go and select objects. Hide this guy. And select this. And we're going to do the edge. And we when we select this edge, then we can unhide and we're able to drag this out then over here. So now we have this collision that's going to be generated for this. Now you'll also see that there's a very small gap in here at the back and over here the gap is slightly bigger. So if we have a look at what's happening here, so with Rake King, if we walk back over here, he's able to walk through here, but he probably might not be able to walk through this location when we're doing it next time or when we regenerate this and I'll tell you why so here is the collision for that and let's build this well before we build it we're going to fix one last thing so we want to select the 3d model and we had a problem with it so we're going to hide this is that the right one no, we're so right we've selected the object and the problem is is the color so if we go to object properties and over here in color, uh, we have, we're on white. And what the source engine does is that white colors or really dark colors uh, have this problem with like reflection where it'll be too reflective and you can't really see the texture. So we need to tone this down so that we can actually see the texture in place. So now when we look at it in the tools, 
uh, if we hide the collision thing we can see this a lot easier and you can see it from a distance away it's a lot easier to see so when we build it in game it'll look less shiny so effectively here you see that's very you can't see the texture detail because it's too reflective so now we've loaded back in we can see that this bell tower we can now walk around it we can't walk into it and we're not able to blink up on top of it either regardless of how much we try and we will see what bat rider does when he interacts with this we still have this guy working as normal we didn't change anything there and this guy now we can't walk through him and he's also not really reflective we can see the texture now it's kind of gray so this way now our collision works but you'll end up seeing that sometimes the navigation doesn't work perfectly or it does right so you can also there's an option for the nav there's instead of using clip if you have some problem with navigation you can also use that material and if you're curious to see what all of those different tool options do you can go into um the dota map and load that up in the tools and the hammer and see what that looks like so you'll see ray king can walk across here and he's able to walk across here as well without any problems but sometimes some heroes are i think all heroes have the same size collision but some units have bigger collisions so they might not be able to walk through locations like this if you create kind of a tighter navigation there so just be aware of that so you can also change it in the custom game with the scripting I think it's with um, what you call those things, uh, the KV values, you can change those so that the hero has like a bigger collision or smaller collision and so forth. And you could even make some sort of like game out of that one team or one type of player can only navigate through certain locations that are smaller or bigger and so forth like that. Is how to create a hole in the ground that you might not want the player to stand in. So you saw in the last time when I was showing you the example of my map that you could walk down through the ground. So we're going to go back here to reflectivity and we'll select the reflectivity 30%. We go create a box here. We'll create another box over here and we're going to create another one over here so that we have just kind of a full round selection. So what we need to do here is do a skip. So we need to build another skip one. So we click the skip and we need to build another box in here so this will skip all the patching that's going to happen during this location so the other problem is now let's say we use a four staff across here what will end up happening is that we're going to fall down through the map into the abyss and let me show you what that looks like so now that i've spawned bat rider in you'll end up seeing that when he flies and he goes across here he falls down into the hole and same ends up happening with uh, four staff as well. You don't really want that to happen. You end up seeing that he's able to fly over this without any problem with going higher or lower. Because the collision of the clipping still happens with this uh, basic map that's underneath. Now the particle effect does look pretty weird right now. But also you'll need to notice that when Batrider is using Firefly, he's going into a flying state. So when we force staff over this, he goes underneath the ground and he goes over the ground. But with this one, with this tower, he just stays on the same height. And we want something like that to happen. And if we try and blink out here, we're not able to select out there. And if we force staff, sometimes you can force staff off the map. So you might want to write some sort of script so that that doesn't happen uh, or you can do like a map edge clip which you need to do as well so you need to put that surround your map by edge clips as well with those boxes it's kind of redundant to do it but you can end up seeing that uh, as purpose for this tutorial but you can look at it i recommend very heavily look at the dota map and see what techniques that they've done but for this hole in the ground what we want to do is create a clip and when we go here we select quad we only want a, a 2d plane and we want to do clip and we go down here we find the clip tool or the material and what we want to do is create a box that's the same size as this ensure that it's the right size we'll look at the this tool here so it wasn't the perfect size now it's the perfect size and now what's going to happen is at this location when we're four staffing across it's going to use this clipping and then it's going to skip the dislocation from being able to stand on it so what will happen is if you end up being in some location in between here when you're blinking or something like that uh, it'll 
it'll snap you to some location that is passable. If you have a look here as well, that when I select my blink dagger, I can't click out here either. And sometimes it's a big inconvenience that if you click here, like why did my blink not work? You click the button and then it unselects your uh, cursor. So you see the cursor is constantly changing type. But when I click here once, it'll, uh, it, I think it actually activates the blink on, let's see what happens with the cooldown. So the cooldown doesn't happen. It just is an invalid uh, location to blink on. So, but it'll allow me to blink across here. So you just don't really want any of these problems to happen. So with this clipping thing, we can set to this location, which is the same height. Or if we wanted some sort of effect where we fall down a little bit when we go into the hole, we can pull it like this and have it like that. So now when we unselect this and we build it and have a look what it looks like in game. So now that we've loaded up, we see Bat Rider is here. We force staff and we force staff across and we don't fall into a big hole. Now let's say our force staff ends somewhere in between. It'll snap us onto the ground onto the left hand side here or wherever it deems the closest location. Uh, with blink tiger you'll also see that we can blink now and select this area and it will also snap us to some location that it deems fit within the game code. Now the other thing is then with firefly which is kind of a good example of changing the Z value. So let's say we fly here and we go down and you see the height slightly changes and goes up and down. That's because that's the clipping location and when the firefly ends it should just snap us to some location. So yeah, it just snaps us over here. And a lot of the reason why this happens is because uh, to test this out is because Batrider has like separate uh, patching. It's like he changes the flying patching so he ignores the normal navigation mesh that is there for most heroes while doing this. So this is quite helpful. And I guess like the very last thing, which I didn't show, which is uh, the ground underneath. It's pretty straightforward and what you need to do is select the texture and the one that I used was called Ember Spirit Remnant Tree underscore Rubik. So I select this one and what you want to do is just create a quad and build a big square underneath your map. So it's like this and we can drag this down a little bit. Now what we can do when we look at this when we go and unselect it we we'll, we'll won't really see anything and what's happening is that if we zoom in really really far we can see the texture scrolling like this but the problem is is that the texture is too small and uh, we want to change that so in order to fix this what we need to do is instead of going to object selection we need to go to face selection and I think yeah, it's face selection so over here is the texture scale so I think it started out at like 0.5 so it's like really, really, really small. But what we can do is we can change this to like 50, let's say. And now the texture is much bigger and we can end up seeing it scrolling underneath the ground. We could change this to be even bigger if we wanted to. So let's say a thousand and 24, which I think what was on there ahead of a second ago. So now it's like much bigger. So it'll act kind of like a cloud that will fly through the sky. So we'll end up seeing what that looks like. And you can also change the materials so like by like apply current materials. So if you found another one, you can click on this here and you can also change like the rotation of this. So let's say if I change it 45 degrees, it'll rotate off over there, 30 degrees, zero degrees. And the texture applies like slightly different each time. So now we can see the texture. This is what it'll look like. Well, it actually, I think it will look a little bit too blurry. But we'll end up seeing what it looks like. And you can change and modify these to whatever you want. So now that we've loaded in, we see the texture is out here. And it doesn't look so good because it's super blurry because it's super stretched out over the whole map. We want to have this a little bit higher detail. So if we go back here, just change something with this. We select the face again. And we want to change this back to, let's say, 50. And we select this guy and we go 50. This time now the texture is going to look a lot less pixelated so we end up seeing that it has a lot more detail even in the hammer like this. So now that we've loaded back in you can see here's the texture it's scrolling underneath us and you can see it up here as well. So this ends up being pretty cool when you're playing a game and it looks completely unique in comparison to what other people might have in their maps with the tiles editor but a lot of this stuff like ramps 
and this uh, collision here with this box for the skiff. If you want to have this to block vision, there's another option there with the materials to pick a, a vision blocker. So and all that sort of stuff going on. You can apply this to the normal map, to the normal tile set maps as well. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe, drop a like, and uh, we'll do some more hammer stuff next episode.